tradition. Courage. Honor. They are what make us. We are the warriors of Tsushima. We are samurai! Sucker Punch began this generation with one of the first major exclusives on PS4 in the open world action game Infamous Second Son. While it may not be the PS4's best exclusive, it gave players a glimpse of what Sony's console could do. So it only seems fitting that Seattle's based studio's newest game, Ghost of Tsushima, would be PS4's last exclusive before the PS5 hits this holiday season. It is obvious Sucker Punch has learned a lot about crafting an open world since its last game. The island Tsushima is one of the most captivating and beautiful worlds I have ever had the pleasure of exploring. But with combat that is deceptively simple and a pretty weak main story, Ghost of Tsushima is more of a fun love letter to samurai cinema than a complete original take on the genre. Personally, I was hoping for the latter. I am Jin Sekai, nephew of Lord Shimura. I have come to avenge his honor. In Ghost of Tsushima, you play as Jin Sakai, a samurai and the leader of Clan Sakai. The story begins with Jin and his uncle, Lord Shimura, who is the Giotto of Tsushima, defending their home against Koto Khan. It does not end well for the samurai, as Khan is able to nearly kill all of them while capturing Lord Shimura and taking control of the island. Jin is fatally wounded, but is saved by a thief named Yuna. Jin then attempts to save his uncle, but is then thrown off a bridge instead. It is at this moment Jin realizes he needs some help and seeks the aid of some friends to assist the charge against the Mongolians to hopefully take back the island of Tsushima. I am not an expert in Japanese history, nor am I a Kurosawa enthusiast, which the game is obviously inspired given its Kurosawa mode, so I can't really tell you how accurately it depicts this battle or how it utilizes its blatant inspirations from the lot of filmmaker. But as someone who plays a lot of story-driven video games and watches a lot of movies, this tale isn't all that original. The idea of getting a group of misfits to take on a major threat to save life as they know it isn't anything new. Jin's journey in becoming the ghost and questioning the samurai code isn't new either. Even when putting these two plot lines together, nothing quite novel comes about as a result. Because it doesn't take this new well-worn formula into any new territory, I kind of lost interest in the main story after I got through the first act. The narrative is told well, but lacks any surprise or suspense. You can tell where Jin's story is heading right away from the beginning. Despite its lackluster main tale, the side missions have some pretty compelling stories of their own. Without spoiling anything, Lady Masako and Sensei Ishikawa's quest lines are among the best told stories in Ghost of Tsushima. I was way more invested in what was happening in their lives than I was in Jin's. Even some of the one-shot missions have more interesting and original tales to tell. It's awesome to see that the storytelling didn't take a hit on the smaller quests. However, I wish the originality was ever more present in the main story. This notion of lack of originality is also present in Ghost of Tsushima's gameplay, a bet in more interesting ways than its storytelling. Combat is similar to the Batman Arkham and Shadow of Mordor series. Essentially, it's a slower paced hack and slash that relies heavily on your ability to counter or dodge enemy attacks. Initially, I really dug the combat. You really feel like a powerful samurai as killing enemies only takes a few hits. It also felt like I was unlocking new abilities at a good pace, from standoffs to the various stances. It felt satisfying as it progressed through the story. Having to switch stances to take care of enemies effectively kept me engaged with just about every combat scenario. However, once I unlocked the ghost stance, which is one of the coolest moments during Jin's story, it didn't really feel Jin was improving on much else. It also didn't feel like I needed to improve at this point. Although I didn't play this way, you could easily mainline the story and still feel in control of every combat scenario. As long as you're good at switching stances and utilizing some of the ghost weapons, fighting off five or more enemies is pretty easy. I also didn't use many of ghost weapons that were available, really all I used was sticky bombs and kunai. Both of these weapons were incredibly helpful in not only stunning the most annoying enemy types, I'm looking at you staff boys, but also taking out anyone who was low on health. But other weapons, like the smoke, just didn't see much use. A lot of it has to do with how clunky it feels to switch between the different ghost weapons on the fly. By default, I made sure that I had enough kunai for each fight. Otherwise, I didn't really bother with ghost weapons unless I was really in a pickle. All in all, the gripes are pretty minor. The combat does feel good. It doesn't feel all that thoughtful. There were points where missions definitely favored a stealthier approach, but I was still able to charge in head on and take any group of enemies pretty easily. My biggest gripe with Ghost of Tsushima's combat is the lack of a lock-on feature. It really feels like I should be able to lock on to enemies, not just so I can single out certain enemies, but so I don't have to also fight a camera which also gets a bit annoying at times. But once I got used to the combat, that gripe became pretty minor. 
While Ghost of Tsushima's gameplay and story might not be revolutionary, the island of Tsushima itself is a real star. I don't think I've ever been so drawn to an open world. It's odd because there really isn't much, in terms of an actual environment, that makes it stand out. There are even at times when I look at it still, it doesn't look all that great, but how the world is designed and looking at it in motion is a sight to behold. I think some of the intricacies of Ghost of Tsushima's presentation will be written off as novelties, but I really do think it boasts the smartest design that I've seen in a video game. Using wind as an indicator for which direction to go would get annoying after a while. However, it never got old and is an awesome way to clear the screen of more visible indicators, like an arrow or a minimap. The clean HUD allows you to take in all the views, which again, look great in motion. Seeing the leaves fall or the grass or the movement in the wind looks really incredible and at times tranquil. This is paired with equally impressive photo mode that really showcases just how beautiful the island of Tsushima is. Ghost of Tsushima may not be the most perfect send-off for the PS4 generation, but that doesn't mean I didn't have a great time playing through Jin's life-changing journey. The worst thing I could say about Sucker Punch's news game is that it lacks originality. It just barely stands out. But if you really love well-crafted worlds and take gorgeous pictures, Ghost of Tsushima is definitely worth a playthrough. For more articles like this, please visit us at DualShockers.com. If you can, leave a like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below and tell us what you thought about the video. We'd love to hear what you have to say.